Hi guys, I'm Xander, I'm the King of the Nature Young Ambassador, and I'm going to be creating a series about insects. What a surprise. The series will include five short videos covering different topics and facts about insects and bugs. So you're ready for when summer comes so you can get out and find them for yourself. As you can see, just now it's quite wintry since it's mid-January. So I'll be using lots of pictures that I've been taking over the past year to help me explain the amazing things about insects. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of the other videos in the series. Okay, to start this whole series off, I'm going to be talking about what an insect is. Insects are regarded as the most successful creatures on planet Earth. This is because they live on both water and on land. And they need very little food to survive because of how small they are. But when they come together in big groups and swarms, such as locusts, they can destroy fields of crops in minutes. Another thing that makes them so successful is that insects are will eat almost anything that is put on their plate. Fun fact, did you know that ants are omnivores, meaning that they'll eat both meat or vegetables? And there's even a type of moth larvae that will eat plastic. You may have heard me talk a lot about invertebrates in some of my previous videos. Well, insects are a subgroup of invertebrates, but be careful, not all invertebrates are insects. The definition of invertebrates is animals that don't have a backbone. Some have soft bodies, such as slugs, worms, corals, and jellyfish. Others have a hard outer casing, such as insects, spiders, and crustaceans. This outer casing is called an exoskeleton. An exoskeleton pretty much protects your body, a bit like a suit of armor would do. Invertebrates are broken down into 10 different categories. Insects fall into the arthropod category. A lot of the other invertebrates in this category are wrongly regarded as insects. Apart from insects, there are things like arachnids, aka spiders, and surprisingly crustaceans, things like crabs and shrimps. Confusing, huh? To identify if these invertebrates are insects, there are a few telltale signs that you can look for. I'm going to be using one of my favourites, the ants, to show you these different features. Don't worry, this picture didn't harm the ants' nest because they're all deep inside the nest hibernating since it's winter. These key features are three pairs of legs, a three-part body made up from a head, a thorax and an abdomen, compound eyes and a two-pair antenna. It's clear to see that by identifying these features, things like spiders, slugs and worms are not insects. To further confuse you, insects are broken down into a number of subclasses, divisions, and a total of 30 orders. These orders cover the 24,000 recorded species in the UK. Wow, now I can't even pronounce half of these. It only takes five orders to cover 80% of all insect life. The other orders are put down to the 20% of other insects, which are individually special. Now, for a bit of history. The first winged insects appeared more than 300 million years ago. Wow, that's ages ago! Some of the fossils found of the early insects represent the present day ones. They look so much alike. Although, unfortunately, most of the fossil found represent groups of insects that are no longer alive. Fun fact, did you know that pre-human dragonflies were massive? They had a wingspan of 60 to 70 centimetres. That's longer than my arm. I can see why the insects don't stay around at this time of year. It's getting a bit cold, so I'll be doing the rest of the video in my house. What's up? To, what's coming up? Well, we're going to do a bit more history and explain what's going to happen in the future videos. As you can see, we're now home and we've gotten a lot warmer. So where was I? Oh yeah, history. Apart from fossils, there's another way to preserve insects. Copal. Copal, also known as resin, is the sap that a tree produces. 
And sometimes when an insect is drinking from this tree, it gets stuck in this sticky sap and gets fossilized over a period of time. You may have seen this happening in the Jurassic Park film, where they allegedly managed to extract dinosaur DNA from a blood-sucking insect that had been trapped in cobble from the prehistoric times. About a hundred million years ago, the first flowering plants appeared. And not, this also brought a whole new source of food, but a whole new source of insect as well, which we now commonly call pollinators, such as bees. After this, everything began to fall into place, with new plants appearing and new insects evolving. Back to modern times. Insects are amazing, ranging from dragonflies, to moths, to butterflies, to wasps with wings, and to millions and millions of species of beetles with the hard outer case, and not to forget my favourite, the ants. Some insects have strong biting mouth parts, others have piercing sucking mouth parts, and others have no mouth parts at all. In the next few videos, I'll be covering the differences between insects and bugs, their life cycle, differences between larvae and nymphs, and how they develop into adults, how insects stay alive using camouflage and their defence techniques, and finally, to round up the series, some fun facts, books and guides to help you get out there and explore. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of the other videos in the series. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye!